It's my feel good breakfast show. We all know that the skin is the largest organ in the body and needs to be looked after properly, whether you're a human or an animal. Some pets are very prone to skin irritations and as pet owners, it is important that we know about the various conditions that could affect our pets. Joining us in studio this morning, Dr. Gemma Driscoll, showing us how to take proper care of our furry friends. I think firstly, I wanna ask you, are there certain breeds that are more prone to skin irritations than others? Any dog can be affected by a skin disease, but um, certain breeds such as Bulldogs and English Bull Terriers especially tend to be a little bit predisposed to, to skin okay. problems. So um, Westies are another one as well. All right, so if you have that kind of breed, I mean, you need to take, uh, I think, a little bit extra care. Exactly. What are some of the main causes of skin conditions in pets? I think the most worrying is dermatitis, obviously. Ex exactly. I mean, the, the first thing to say about that is that skin is always a frustrating condition to treat. It's uh, frustrating for owners and vets, and it often takes quite a long time to get it under control. But the way I explain the possible causes to my clients is to follow a kind of stepwise process. So at the top of the, the hierarchy of, of, of possible causes are parasites, so your fleas, mites, ticks, those kind of things. So we rule those out first. And then beyond that, there's infection, so bacteria, yeast, fungi, those kind of things that we also need to treat. And then beyond that, there's underlying causes that make the skin a little bit more predisposed to those secondary infections. And that's what we need to ultimately get under control to um, treat the condition. And that's where your allergic dermatitis and things come in. And, and beyond that, more weird and wonderful, less okay. common things. And where, where would they manifest on the body if you take a look at, um, are there certain areas that you should uh, keep an eye out for? Certainly. So for parasites and things, often fleas you'll find around the rump area and um, mites and things things often on the paws and, and back of the legs just depending um, and then infections can be anywhere but um, allergic skin disease often you'll find that they chew their paws or rub their faces those kind of things okay. those areas. all right so what are what are some of the signs and symptoms that we should should look out for should there be a skin irritation sure so you might see changes in the skin itself so reddening of the skin crusting scaling little spots and things on the skin you can also notice changes in the hair coat, so thinning of the hair, hair loss, for example, um, sometimes a greasy feel to the coat or, or a smell. And equally, in the dog or, or the cat itself, you might see that they're chewing, scratching, um, biting of themselves, that they're a little bit out of sorts because they're feeling a little bit uncomfortable in themselves. So they're the kind of signs you need to look out for. And I always also warn my, my clients with, with animals that have skin disease that the ears and the anal glands are just an extension of the skin, essentially. So often animals with skin disease will suffer with recurrent ear infections and, and managing the skin as part of that is, is very important. So what does a pet owner um, stand to do once once you've established, you've identified that there is a bit of a problem? What are the treatment options out there available? Sure. So um, basically, if we kind of go back to that hierarchy, it's a nice way okay. to try and explain it. So obviously, if you find that there's a parasitic cause, then, then you treat that. So for fleas and mites with a specific therapy. Um, if there's infections, often long courses of antibiotics are necessary often. So for six weeks. So it can be quite a, a long haul as far as that's concerned. And then we often augment that with shampoos and treatments for yeast and fungi if necessary. Um, and then ultimately what we need to try and do is eliminate that underlying cause. One thing we often do is with allergies there can be a lot of different triggers for the allergy. Food is one of them. And animals become allergic to things they've been exposed to for quite some time. Um, so what we need to do is change their diet onto something they've never been exposed to before, ideally. And you can use a formulated diet like the Hills DD, for example. And then you put them on, on this diet for about four to six weeks exclusively. You have to be very strict not to give any tidbits. Um, and if there is a food component, then at the end of that, the dog um, should be much improved. They can be fully recovered if it's purely food. Equally, some dogs improve a little bit, but if there's other allergic components, then they also um, will still be a little bit symptomatic, but then we go on to managing the other components um, with other medications. Perfect, Dr. Gemma, thank you so much. Just one last very quick um, tip from you. Um, fleas, obviously a yeah. big problem as well. How would you check and remove fleas on pets? Sure, so um, basically often um, around the neck and the rump is where you often find fleas, although you can find them all over. So sometimes you'll actually see them if you kind of okay. sift them part through the hair. Um, sometimes you'll just see little black specks, which is flea dirt. Okay. So that's all signs of fleas. And then there's a range of different products. 
products to try and, and get rid of yeah. those. So little topical um, applications or tablets, just depending right. on what suits your animal best. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, no Dr. Problem. Gemma Driscoll, giving us some great advice to make sure that our pets are left with beautiful, shiny coats.